So a couple of things have been really instrumental in getting us this far. The first thing is all the same things that make pancreas cancer so difficult to detect and treat in patients also make it very hard to study in the laboratory. The pancreas is hard to get to and we almost never get to patients early in the course of their disease. So we haven't understood how it initiates, how it progresses, how it develops the characteristics that we know ultimately become so lethal. And so the first thing we did was engineer an exact replica of the human disease in an animal model. And then we could watch the disease unfold step by step. And what we've learned from studying these genetically engineered animal models of the disease has been fascinating and has actually turned much of what we thought was true about this disease on its head. So one of the things that's always been confusing is that chemotherapy for this cancer in particular has been extremely ineffective in a way that you wouldn't necessarily predict when you study the isolated cancer cells in a dish in the laboratory. So many cancers actually are relatively sensitive to a wide variety of chemotherapies and those treatments have actually proved effective in the clinic for those cancers. You can take those same chemotherapies and kill often pancreas cancer cells grown in a dish but those same drugs didn't seem to have the same effect in patients and we've never quite understood why. Well it turns out that pancreas cancer actually generates an intense inflammatory reaction. So there are cells that come in and lay down collagen and other materials that's pretty much like a scar. So the tumor ends up being like a very dense hard scar um, and we always thought that that was the body's attempt to try to contain the tumor, that this was a good thing. In point of fact, it's exactly the opposite. It's all orchestrated by the tumor cells themselves, and it's a way of creating a shield, a fortress around it. The second thing it does is it actually prevents blood vessels from growing and flourishing and remaining open in the tumor. In other words, Pancreas cancers, unlike most other cancers, decrease the blood supply, not increase it. So they essentially isolate themselves from the circulation. And now what you have is a sanctuary. So we generally give chemotherapy drugs through the vein. We give them systemically. So the drugs go throughout the body and hopefully find their way into the tumor. Well, the pancreas cancer basically has evaded that entire process. And those few uh, molecules of drugs that might actually make their way to the tumor, they find it very difficult to penetrate across it because of that dense matrix. And so these are the things that have been responsible for that disconnect between the ability to kill these cells in a dish, but not in the organ where the tumor arises. And so what we've started focusing on is some of those ancillary features to the tumor. So not just the tumor cell itself, but all of that surrounding collection of cells and matrix proteins. And we found one component in particular that was extremely abundant. And the presence of that component generates pressures that are really high. And that's what collapses blood vessels and keeps them from being open and allowing drugs to get in. In those few percent of cases where patients present early enough to remove the tumor, that would always be the first thing you would try to do. However, these cells also spread very rapidly throughout the body. And so almost always, even in those patients who initially look like they're resectable, like you can remove their tumor, microscopically those cells have already spread. And so you're almost always faced with the challenge of trying to treat all those metastatic sites as, sites as well. And it turns out those metastatic sites organize that same kind of inflammatory reaction and create the same kind of shield and fortress. And so what do you do? Well, what we tried, the strategy we tried here was to take an enzyme that would actually degrade that major component in this shield and essentially dissolve that matrix. And now what you have is a tumor cell that's revealed and vulnerable. You also have blood vessels that open because those pressures are relieved and now you can get concentrations of drugs in at will um, and we found that those same drugs that we use in the clinic that previously were not effective appear to be very effective if you can actually get them into the tumor. What's really exciting though is that some of these findings actually help solve riddles for us. Suddenly when you start thinking about the tumor 
as being organized in this fashion, you can explain a lot of what was previously unexplainable. And that lends some excitement to the idea that this really may be the right strategy. Um, so much so that we actually have already started the clinical trial to test this idea in patients. And so we're very hopeful that it will in fact work. But the bottom line is, have you helped a patient live longer? And that's something that we hope to find out before too long.